I want to continue to follow uh, one of the biggest stories that we've had all year so far and one of the biggest stories we've ever covered, and that is the earthquake in Haiti. Bring you up to speed. We've had a lot of reports uh, on a daily basis. Uh, CNN has, ha has a whole team on the ground. But let me just bring you up to speed with what we know, and it's grim. The latest death toll, 150,000 people killed. That's according to the government, according to the Haitian Health Ministry. Uh, others involved in the relief effort, the, uh, the EU, the Pan American Health Organization, actually have an estimate that 200,000 uh, people were killed. But as Carl Penhall and others have described to us, uh, some people are being buried in mass graves just to prevent a health hazard by having bodies around the streets. So uh, the count is a little inaccurate, uh, or could be inaccurate. 194,000 people uh, are thought to have been injured by the uh, earthquake. And of course, those numbers are still coming in because so many people sort of left Port-au-Prince to go elsewhere. So hard to collect those numbers. And a lot of aid agencies have said they would just as soon not be dealing with collecting numbers at this point. They still want to be dealing with uh, the survivors and how to treat them. It is estimated that one million people have been displaced. Uh, that involves people who have lost their homes or their shelters uh, and people who have left Port-au-Prince. The government estimates uh, over 200,000 people have left Port-au-Prince. Prince. They've just fled uh, so that they can go to places where there's less destruction and perhaps try and get shelter and some sort of livelihood there. A lot of the information that we gather uh, is from our team on the ground in Port-au-Prince and uh, Carl Penhall is part of that, uh, that group. Uh, Carl is live with us right now. He was covering uh, a food line and we were going to talk to you from there, Carl, but you've actually left there because it's, it's starting to get a little rough where you were. Tell us about this. Well, it was certainly getting rough earlier on and it really just goes to show that two weeks after this earthquake, and uh, international agencies and even the United Nations hasn't got it organized to get enough food out to enough people so that desperation doesn't set in. We were driving down the road this morning near the main square, which you can see behind me, and then suddenly we saw literally thousands of people starting to run. We look to the other side and we see a convoy of the United Nations armored personnel carriers and two trucks and we follow the crowd, literally thousands of people clamoring and, and, and pushing together for aid. Um, the Brazilian peacekeepers accompanying that aid had set up metal barricades. There were so many people that they were pushing together to try and get through those barricades. And at several points, the Brazilian peacekeepers had to drive them back, spraying them with pepper spray. We even heard a shot fired in the air as well. So suddenly you've got these hungry, desperate people then choking, choking and also vomiting on the pepper spray that has been sprayed into their faces. One man turned to me, he said, I've lost everything in the earthquake, I've lost my home, I've lost my family and now I'm losing my dignity because I can't even get food and they're treating us like animals. I asked a Brazilian colonel who was in charge of the operation and he says, we're doing the best we can, we're trying to drive these people back and get some order so they don't crush one another. And he said something that was very telling to me. He said the Haitian people are not violent people, but right now they are desperate for food. Right. We just cannot get them enough, Ali. What's the issue? You know, a week ago, we've been talking every day, Carl, but a week ago there was still a massive infrastructure problem. Aid was getting into the country. We know it was getting to the airport, uh, but there were road problems in getting it to where it needs to go. Is there enough food in the country uh, for those people who are desperate right now? Is it a problem of just getting it to people, or are we still looking for more food into Haiti right now? That specific question one would have to ask to the agencies, but I don't believe that there's ever enough food here in Haiti, because even in normal times, these people have not got enough food to eat. And when something like this happens and they haven't even got the shelter of their homes, then that doubles the need, doubles the necessity. Talking to people there, waiting in the food line, they say they, are, roughly speaking, are getting some kind of aid distribution every third day. Wow. And they say between that, they have to space out what food they have. They might not be able to eat for one of those days. They have to really spread the food out, just real survival rations meanwhile. So I don't think we can talk about enough food getting here on the ground in Haiti. The, some food obviously is here, but nevertheless, um, the organization is a key issue and if you sure. take just five tons of rice to thousands of people there's not going to be enough to go around. Well I suppose you're right and even if there were enough food in a uh, in a city that had its infrastructure intact there would be logistical problems in getting it to everyone. We know that from large-scale events in major cities obviously with the infrastructure as damaged as it is in Haiti it just further complicates what seems like a simple thing to most people. Carl thank you for being with us as you are uh, every day bringing us up to speed with what's going on. We can't forget the story uh, in 
Haiti, even though uh, the worst of it feels like it's over, the reality is that uh, for some people, the worst is yet to come. Uh, now, the U.S. military is making progress in getting relief to the millions of Haitians who are struggling without food and water. A U.S. commander said that as of now, the military has delivered more than one million bottles of water and one million meals ready to eat. The other good news is a new 500-bed hospital is being built outside Port-au-Prince. That should be ready by next week. Now, across the pond, Charlie Simpson, a seven-year-old British boy, decided to raise money for earthquake relief with a sponsored bike ride around London Park. His parents set up a donor's link on the UNICEF website. Well, pledges have topped more than $200,000. I saw the pictures on TV and I thought it was really sad, so I just wanted to, you know. You wanted to do something, yeah. didn't you? Oh. Actor John Travolta and his wife, Kelly Preston, arrived in Port-au-Prince last night. Travolta flew his own plane packed with food, medical supplies and doctors. And we're getting a new look at the very moment the massive earthquake struck exactly two weeks ago today. You're watching surveillance video of how four different people lived through the 7.0 quake.